Hello and welcome back ladies and gentlemen to the Historical Humans YouTube channel and today on Historical Humans Heritage we are going to the beautiful city of Prague in the wonderful country of Czechia and uh, yeah I figured we'd talk about this historic city center that is one of Europe's uh, underrated beauties I think. I had a friend who got to go to Prague, and I think they got they had a chance to actually visit this church, and I was jealous of uh, all the pictures. Yes, the one here on the right. No, very yes, the beautiful picture. city, very very historic. Yeah, no, yeah, it is. Uh, it was built primarily under uh, Home, Holy Roman Emperor Charles the Fourth in the 14th century, but it dates as far back as the 11th century. So this. Uh, Old. Yeah, uh, and in fact, there are, I believe, three parts of the city that are inscribed on the UNESCO World Heritage Site: the Old Town, the Lesser Town, and the New Town. And I just gotta say, that middle name just feels like the Lesser Town had a grudge. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, this is the Lesser part of town. Yeah, yep. I bet that's good for a conversation. But I mean. Part of the reason is just the unique architecture, the beautiful buildings, the wonderful Orthodox churches that spring up. I mean, it's truly a gem of its kind. And it's honestly, I think, really cool because it maintained a lot of its integrity, even despite everything that happened from World War II to the um, fight for their freedom in 68. I mean... Chechia has been a battleground, but yet somehow Prague still maintains this characteristic beauty. Yes, uh, yeah, definitely. Is. There, there was many wars uh, fought in and around Prague uh, during the uh, historical <laughs> period uh, from which all these uh, buildings uh, come to us. It is, um, you know, it's in uh, it's in what is known as Central Bohemia and. Uh, yeah, if you look on a map of Europe, it's like it seems like a pretty decent uh, place for an east-west or north-south access to try and you know conquer everyone else through. <laughs> oh, there were a lot of axes who went through here. Yay! Mm. <laughs> World War II joke aside. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. um, many of the uh, many of the sites uh, to be seen are enhanced by the fact that they uh, that they tend to. Uh, the, the really fancy stuff tends to border the river that runs through the city. Uh, I believe that is the I believe that is the Volga River. Volga. Although I am not certain, I am a little um, off the mark with uh, Central European geography. Prague is on the Vlata, Vltava River. V -L -T Vltava. 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 Vltava, yes. I can't pronounce that the name. I, I, it's like, I knew it was a V letter, and I still got it wrong. But yes, the I knew it was something that the Vltava liver. Yes. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm sorry, I'm just... <laughs> Which, yeah, connects the Elbe with the North Sea. So, like, it's got some connections. Yeah. It's a very um, well-connected river. But, oh, just seeing this, like, medieval fortification in the middle of the city with the archway and the flags. Just oh, yeah. the Wait, Zemo. wasn't yeah. this also the center of the, uh, uh, like, this was a Reformation site, too, right? Like, for the uh, Christian Reformation during the, like, 14, 1500s. John, John Huss, John Huss and all this in the Hussites. Not the Hussites. Yes, it, yeah, the, yeah, I do believe the Hussites uh, had a had an association with this area. Uh, I can't speak for certain to the extent of the association, but yeah, they would have been in the region. Uh, it's, like, it's like, dang it, things I don't know. <laughs> it, it's kind of cool because Prague really, much, really is very much one of these like borderland cities between what we think of as like Central Europe and parts of the... Of parts of further Eastern Europe. So you see this melding of culture and style. You see inspiration. Like the building very much looks like a combination of what you would see in like Ukraine or Belarus. And also with the combination of German and Italian and Austrian influences. It's just, it's a cool combination. 
it's also very overlooked by a lot of tourists, uh, at least here in America. No one really thinks about right. going to Prague. They think Paris, London. Uh, I think as far east, or, or or at least as far east in Central Europe they go is Berlin. Oh yeah, if you're lucky. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's the uh, it's yeah it's the um, I believe with America it's the Americanized uh, obsession with the uh, with the Western powers and uh, the you know basically if you were a major player in world war ii you get noticed and that's it <laughs> mm-hmm. which prague is repeatedly um winning awards and highly recommended because it's very cheap to go visit it's it's a beautiful area the people there are beautiful i mean they're <laughs> world renowned yeah um yeah and it is um it, it and Prague is traditionally uh, Europe's uh, center of culture. It um, it has uh, among uh, other names, it has uh, it's pl- been home to uh, Kepler, uh, who is uh, I believe known with a lot of astronomy and astrophysics. Yes, uh, Einstein, uh, Mozart, Kafka. Uh, those last. Oh, two. yeah, yeah, I believe. I believe it's oh what book ah oh, cafe I, I no um it's one of the books here it's like right there on the top of my talk one of his um books takes place in Prague ah uh, if I can yeah, also so. even Einstein spent time in Prague yeah yeah it is it is it is a it is a center of art and science uh for most of Europe for pretty considerable chunk of uh, of of history. I think not, it's just called the trial. Not as many uh, notable figures as a city, say like Vienna, but these ones are not as bad reputation either. Yeah, well, we've got some. There's, there's some pretty uh, there's some you know pretty important individuals here. It's just you know, in addition to all the uh, fancy old architecture from you know basically all of europe and you know about 800 years of history's worth (laughs) also we didn't even mention the fact that prague is home to one of the oldest universities in all of europe oh yes that's a fun one founded in 1348 yep older than even the aztec empire put that into perspective i think oxford's older isn't it um if it is not by a whole lot yeah potentially um oh fun fact aaron this is where your hussite reformation uh you know the hussites come in with the reformation because uh it's Prague university that starts that shit yeah oh, never mind the oxford D-Fen- is a lot older yeah. the defenestrations <laughs> the big one being the second where they <laughs> in case you don't know what the word is means for those of you back home, it means just literally throwing someone out a window. Yeah. Defenestration. You yeah. disagree uh, with them so hard, you throw them out a window. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The shouting of this is Sparta is entirely optional. But yeah, so talking about why this city is important, let's look at some of the criterion. Uh, obviously, it illustrates the process of continuous urban growth from the Middle Ages all the way through the uh, modern day. Obviously, the architecture shows a wide array of styles, distinct cultures, um, time frames. And also, uh, one of the big ones, again, Aaron, to your point of defenestration, uh, the role of Prague in medieval development of Christianity is one of the reasons it is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Yeah. Uh Yeah. Prague is itself, uh, unfortunately, under threat by the concept of development. Uh, there are a number of developers who wish to build what are termed uh, oversized uh, buildings within the historic district and within its buffer zone. Um, there is essentially uh, a large push going on by developers to build skyscrapers within the uh, within the city, uh, something that would irrevocably compromise um the landscape uh of you know of the historic center 
that's of course, one... it's always fucking developers. Well, and that's one of the things where um, where a lot of times people don't consider that when you are doing these large scale developments, people always talk about the impacts that it has on historic sites, and in a lot of times. The general public seems to think, oh, as long as you're not physically damaging the site, then it's okay. But with that, it's affecting the view shed. And the view shed is actually something that you do have to take into consideration because it can irrevocably change the setting in which you're viewing something. Um, I think, honestly, a really good example of that is um, something that I honestly don't think either one of you guys are aware of. There is a grave on the south side of Chicago in the middle of a dock. And it's because this man owned the land when it was marshlands. And when he died, he wrote into his will and basically demanded that that parcel stays the same no matter what. Well, they define that by his grave. So his grave is left unchanged, but they developed everything else around it. So what used to be a beautiful prairie land with a view of the lake now became this industrial area. And while the site itself wasn't impacted, the view shed changed. Everything else changed. You w walk around and you feel like you need to be forklift certified just to be out there. God, why? Can developers just not? Can they just, like, fuck off to, like, literally any other space? Most historic yeah. preservation is only required to stop the bulldozers. Yeah, and... One of the things uh, with Prague in particular here is um, this historic center. It's you know it's right on top of basically the capital of uh, of the uh, you know of the nation of Chechia. So um, there's a lot of pressure for development. Um, the uh, uh, the famous uh, Prohanitz, uh Park is threatened to basically cease to exist. Uh, it's as a park want to build. Uh, on top of it um the same uh arguments have been made against uh uh such things as central park in new york city and if you happen to actually live live in new york you know exactly how much people there will defend it well yeah you I've, know they'll I've defend heard. a park but not the african village that was raised to build the the, the central park but you know it's okay. It's okay. but yeah. still like I people really do not think about what this guy imagine imagine if they just like bulldozed half of the half of the uh skyline for Chicago, which is iconic, second probably only to the New York skyline. I would oh, yeah. put it first because the New York skyline is a lot more indistinct indistinguishable. Chicago, you can tell what buildings are what. It's very unique. Yeah. Yeah. The the, the concept like, oh well they didn't touch they... the other stuff. Yeah. Now there's like a giant statue to whoever. You don't now. realize the value of things like this until they're gone. And that's really what ends up happening a lot of times when you fight against developers is they'll fight tooth and nail to destroy a historic property. But then the second it's gone, you go, wait, actually, that was unique. Yeah. Like, oh, man, I can't believe we let that get destroyed. Yeah. And then they look angrily at the developer who got away with it. All right, before yeah. I go on an anti developer yeah. tangent. Yeah, the uh yeah, the, the song Pave Paradise will now play in our outro. <laughs> uh, <laughs> editors. Uh whoever you may be. Yep. If you guys enjoyed watching today's episode, we love talking about these cities and Prague is definitely one that gets overlooked. So we thought it was important to talk about. Very beautiful, very historic. And a great case in why historic preservation is important and vital to cities and communities around the world. Thank you guys for watching. I'm going to hop off the soapbox.